My name's Seven Gray, and for the last three and a half years, I have been living in a DIY self-built step van, which is behind me. This is a 1995 Grumman Olsen step van. Now, you may not have heard of Grumman Olsen, but they're one of the largest contractors for the post office and UPS for making delivery vehicles. So this is a specialized delivery vehicle. Step vans are known primarily for two things that make them step vans. One, the steps. Right where you would normally have a passenger seat on these vehicles, you have a set of steps going in. Underneath are the two batteries, which are the starter batteries, and you can see the driver's seat back over here. The second feature that makes a step van unique is a pocket door. This is the pocket door here. You can see it slides into the wall. It doesn't swing out into traffic, which is ideal for a delivery truck so that you don't clip your doors and you can park closer to things and still get the door open. Uh, added advantage, you can drive around with the doors open, passenger side and the driver's side, which is great for uh, when it's in the spring or the fall and you have wonderful weather. That's really a lot of fun. I've been a full-time nomad since about 2010, so that's about 10 years now. Uh, the first six years I was traveling the world, uh, traveling to over 50 countries just with a backpack, and I found myself in a difficult position every time I would be coming back to the United States, either passing through after, say, nine months in Europe or six months in Europe and then going to South America for six or eight months or going to Asia, for the winter, something like that. I would pass through the United States for a number of weeks. I didn't have a vehicle here. I didn't have my own place to stay. And so I was asking favors of family and friends, staying on their couches for weeks at a time. That situation of staying on somebody's couch for three weeks, although I enjoy visiting them, I feel like it was a little bit too much to ask. So thus I decided to buy um, a vehicle which would accomplish two things. It would give me a place to stay when I came back to the United States and a set of wheels to be able to get around. So anyway, I wanted to get a place to stay and a set of wheels and something I didn't have to pay monthly payments on as I was traveling the world. And so I decided on a step van. I decided a step van would be better for me than other campers or vehicles because I'm nearly six foot six. I wanted the extra ceiling height. I wanted to build a fun creative space that was easy for me to live in and enjoyable for me to um, have as my house, my mobile space. And it was something that I thought would be an interesting challenge for my life. So I chose a step van as my personal living space and transportation when I'm in the United States. On the roof of the step van, I have two large solar panels. They're 355 watts a piece, giving me 710 watts of solar power. Now, one of the great things about it is from this angle down on the ground, you almost can't see them, which adds to the stealth factor. So let me talk about stealth camping, urban camping, and what that's all about. Stealth camping is a highly debated topic. The actual term is highly debated among full-timers, people who are living in vans, RVs, uh, things like that that are moving around, and particularly those that are inside an urban environment in a city. So what does the term mean? Well, simply put, it's uh, somebody who's parking on the street somewhere in a city or urban environment and attempting to not get a knock during the middle of the night. So they're trying to not draw attention to themselves. Uh, a vehicle like a step van is much, much better at parking overnight in an urban environment because it blends in better to the background than say an RV. This is the back of the step van. I have two narrow doors here that I can open up with again without swinging into traffic, which makes for great airflow. I have front to back pass through all the way through the step van in my living quarters. Up here I've installed a window AC. This is a standard um, residential model. It runs off 110 volts. It requires 410 watts of power and I have enough solar to run this in the afternoons or I can plug into shore power and run it day and night. 
Over here, you can barely see poking out from the bottom of the step van an exhaust vent. This is for a Chinese parking diesel heater. It pulls from my diesel tank here, and it's one of my three heating sources inside of the step van. Let me take you inside. I'll show you the other heating sources and give you a tour of the inside. This is the inside of the step van. This is the driver's seat, so I have a standard industrial seat. It's fairly comfortable for long distance and a very large steering wheel. It does have power steering power brakes, which is great. I installed an additional backup camera and I installed a GPS speedometer. The speedometer on this uh, went out a while ago. It doesn't work really well, so I use a GPS-based speedometer now. And a fun little thing, I have an altimeter that was given to me by one of my YouTube subscribers. So I can see the altitude as I'm driving up and down Colorado mountains, or right now I'm in Florida, so you can see the altitude is about 290 feet, almost 300 feet. Over here on the dash, I also have a ACR, automatic charge relay, which allows me to charge my house batteries, which run the house and all of the inside of the step van for the living quarters, and I can charge it from the alternator. This is what I call the power box. It has all of the electronic components or the majority of them all in one place. So inside I have a 2000 watt inverter. This is great because I can plug in to shore power a house, a friend's house, somebody like that, and plug in here and charge the house batteries and run my air conditioning and other appliances inside. Over on the other side I have a solar charge controller this is my fuse box, my bus bars, and all of my wiring. Up here I've added a fan to give myself some extra airflow front to back, so I'm able to point this down at the cooking area and the lounge area. I've installed four of these industrial type lights. These are Edison bulbs and they run off of LEDs, so they're very, very power efficient. And these are all 12 volt. They may look like 110 volt, but they're actually 12 volt. One of my funnest and favorite features that I put in this, I removed the aluminum ceiling that was in here and I replaced it with this translucent coroplast uh, type paneling that I purchased and I have videos, uh, like 300 videos on my channel, I'll link down below uh, of all the build out of how this was built. But when I put these in, I decided to put behind them some strings of LED lights let me show you. Here's the remote control and I point it over there and you can see this wonderful light show that lights up. I absolutely love laying down and looking up at this and it provides a wonderful ambient glow in the evenings. Another one of my favorite features, which there are many in this step van, is this pull-out table. And it goes into the middle of the aisle like this and I can sit here and work on my computer or I can have a meal with a friend uh, and I actually have a larger table that I can use here if I'm going to be entertaining a larger group I can get another two people with the larger table but it involves uh, unscrewing this and screwing the other one in so I don't use it that often this works 99 percent of the time and is a wonderful wonderful thing it spins around and I can just move it right back out of the way when I'm done I put in double benches because one of the things that I wanted to do with the step van is to travel around the United States to various community gatherings, which is not happening right now because of the COVID, but I go to a lot of bus gatherings, van life gatherings, RV gatherings, where I serve tea and do a book exchange. So I like to have all the extra seating here so that I can serve tea out of the kitchen area to all of my guests that are sitting on these two benches. This right hand bench on this side has storage underneath and a lift up uh, compartment. Inside I have my Chinese diesel heater and then just a bunch of storage. This side however is a slide out slap bed. So there's a set of forks in there that work like this and it, it can extend out into the aisleway to form a double wide bed. So what I can do is take this back piece here and pull it off and set it in the area where the aisle is. And then I have a large, large bed. It's almost seven feet tall, like six foot ten, and it's seven feet wide. I don't think anybody in their RV has a bed that large. It's uh, quite nice. 
I'm nearly six foot six, so I love having a larger, longer bed. On this side over here, I built a small kombucha station. One of the things I enjoy doing while I'm traveling and parked for two weeks at a time is brewing kombucha on the road. So I have two gallon jugs here with kombucha inside, and then I have a place down here for my bottles uh, when they're empty or when I'm doing the second ferment. So this is really a fun, nice thing to have. I have a very large countertop here with a double sink, and I have an electric pump to run my water. Underneath this, in this area down here, I have a 43 gallon water tank. I use about five gallons uh, every week, so this gives me about a two month uh, water supply, which is uh, very, very nice to have. Up here, I have a drying rack that I can use for drying uh, just dish towels. I can use it for small loads of laundry. Uh, if I'm going swimming, put my swimming trunks up there. It's very, very convenient to use. I have two bookshelves in the rig. This is my personal bookshelf where I put books that I don't want to give away. And then when I'm having my community gathering serving tea, I do a book exchange and I have a separate bookshelf specifically for that near the front of the rig. Let me show you that. This is the bookshelf for my book exchange and typically I receive a lot more donated books than I can fit into this area. So I end up donating to local libraries and charities uh, and other organizations. So I keep the newest books in here and I rotate out the oldest books. It seems like a good way. This bookshelf also comes out, it just slides out and then I can remove this bookshelf and underneath is my battery box. And the batteries down there I have four lead acid batteries and my intent is when those run out to upgrade those to lithium. I wanted to be able to have a passenger chair with a seat belt. So one of my YouTube subscribers to my vlog channel donated this chair out of an RV. It has a built-in seat belt and it can rotate around to face the front direction or rotate around and face into the social area. Usually I leave it this way until I have a passenger. Over here is the controller for my diesel heater. This is my primary heat. Um, it's been running fantastic for about five or six months now. It took me a little while to figure out all the intricacies and how this thing works. It's a little bit finicky, but that is my diesel heater there. I built these cabinets to, to hold up the countertops myself. I built these out of plywood and then I put barn wood on the front and I made these drawers with latches on them so that they stay closed when I'm driving around. Over here I put a slide out and the slide out is right exactly on top of the wheel well and inside is my Dometic refrigerator. I have a two chamber Dometic. It just slides out like this and I can go all the way out and then this side is the freezer and this side is the refrigerator. I have uh, two ways that I cook my food. One is a propane two burner stove. So this is hooked up to a propane bottle that's sealed and vented and it sits right over the top of the refrigerator. There's no residual heat on the, on the bottom. You can actually put your hand up there and it's just barely warm. Back here in the corner, I have a Berkey water filtration system and I put it up on a little stand so it's easy to put cups underneath and then underneath I put a little storage area for bottles and glasses. Um, I have power strips along the back of both of the countertops so that I'm able to easily plug in 110 volt items. One of those items that I plug in here is an induction cooktop which I can just set out when I need it. Down here is my other heat source. This is my backup if the Chinese diesel heater is having problems or if I need to double up my heat source. This is a Wave 6 propane heater. This is a catalytic heater. I keep the cover on it because it's very sensitive to dust. And one of the things I did was I put it on a hinge so that I'm able to change the direction to have it point further forward down the aisleway or to point out to the side or put it all the way back to be out of the way. I have two closet spaces, one on this side and one on that side with metal locker doors that were donated to me and salvaged. I put a little mirror up here so that I'm able to you know, work with my hair which doesn't really exist or shave or whatever else I need to do. And then I just have a bungee here and I'm able to open it up and access the closet space here with some shelves on the bottom. 
The closet on this side, I also have a cellular booster in there that I can boost my uh, internet Wi-Fi router. So I have that inside of there. And it makes it very convenient because if I want to take my cell phone and stand next to it for a phone conversation, I can boost the cell phone. And when I'm not talking on the cell phone and just want the dedicated Wi-Fi, I can have it sitting right next to the booster to be able to boost the signal and give me good internet here. Uh, in the back area on the right and the left, I put a number of these um, wooden boxes. And this side I have primarily food. So this is like my pantry food area. And then down on the bottom area, I have a composting toilet. Let me show you that. The composting toilet, I want it to be out of the way and then I can use it when I need to. So I just pull it out and it's in the aisle way and then I can use the composting toilet and slide it back in. My intent, which I've not yet done, is to make a curtain that will close off this area here on the aisle way for privacy. And if I ever end up traveling with someone, then I'll add that curtain. But for now, um, it's not an issue. On this side, I have more of these wood boxes. These are all tools. These are the tools that I use for building and maintaining the step van. And it's just a variety of tools. I have a pop-up uh, canopy that I can use when I'm parked in one place for a long time. And I have a small shower tent that I can use for showering. Uh, when I'm out camping and don't have access to Planet Fitness. When I'm in the city, I just use a Planet Fitness uh, membership and I'm able to go and have unlimited water and wonderful showers and get a workout in. I have two roof vents here. This is one of them. These are Max Air fans so I can drive around in the rain and no moisture will come in. They're really wonderful because the way they work when they lift up is the venting is underneath. When they're closed, you can't see these from the outside at all. I added three screens on the three doors with this magnetic lock in the middle. These are mosquito bug resistant screens and they're wonderful for opening up my door, having airflow, and also having easy access in and out of all of the doors. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of my step van, my living space, and I hope you're enjoying this channel. This is my channel that I've owned. Uh, as you've noticed from all the other videos, I love eclectic, unique DIY builds, and so I strive to fill the channel with those. I hope you enjoy it, and if you do, please uh, do a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you in a future video.